We are ready. It's hot out here. Whew. Do we want to give it a few more minutes to let a couple more people sign in? Of course. I saw that. We have people from France. Yes. Maryland. Lakeland, Florida. Lakeland. How do I change my name? Canada. Trinidad. Yeah, Dr. Winchester was with us yesterday or the day before. We're happy to have everybody here. The last day, so now we we don't bother you anymore. Only for the evaluation. Francisco, just let me know when you want to get started. We have two people waiting for that real are quick. Joining. We still have people of getting in. So let's <laughs> wait a couple of minutes. I have people in the waiting room. There is one that looks like that has some trouble with connection. Let's wait for him. Um, probably if you are hitting us. All right. All yeah. right, he is in. He or she is in. We are ready to go. All right, so welcome everyone. This is the last day of the Small Ruminant Conference. Thank you for joining us um, today. If you have not done so, um, please visit the link um, in order to do the evaluation. Um, if you are waiting to do the evaluation because you are attending multiple sessions, um, please do that evaluation this weekend or the beginning of, of next week. 
I'm going to share my screen. So we want to go over a few housekeeping uh, items before we get started. Everyone is muted during this, except for the host and co-host. Please make sure that your mic stays muted. If you want to have your video on, that's perfectly fine. Um, if you have any questions, comments, please put them in the chat box and we'll be more than happy to answer them um, as we go along during the presentation today. Everything will be emailed to you in regards to um, if there's PowerPoints, any resources that the presenters would like to provide you. Those will be emailed using the email address that you registered for the webinar. The recording of the webinars will be available on our CFLAG YouTube page and those can be accessed at any time. They will stay up there. And I also believe they'll be on our website as well, but the YouTube page is the easiest way to access them. If you have not done so, uh, and those can be accessed at any time, they will stay up there. And I also believe they'll be on our website as well, but the YouTube page is the easiest way to access them. If you have not done so, why is there feedback? Um, and those can be accessed at any time, they will stay up there. And I'm sorry, it's my bad. Okay. I was doing the live in, in my personal web page, Facebook web page, and I have both things talking at the same time. Okay. My I wanted to make sure it wasn't anything on, on my end. Um, again, if you have those relevant questions that pertains to the presentation, um, please ask them in the chat box. Um, use only the chat box. We want everyone to be courteous to each other and also to our presenters today. If um, there seems to be any rudeness during the, the presentations, uh, we will boot you out of the webinar and won't let you back in. Oops. And again, make sure that you um, participate in that evaluation. So Francisco actually took uh, a map and we thought it was interesting by how many people not from the United States that have joined us on these webinars the past few days. So this is just a map showing um, where participants are from. So please make sure that you include where you're from, um, whether you're from Florida, another state within the United States, another country. So we can add you to our map to sh show um, the locations of the people that we're reaching through this small ruminant conference. So please make sure you put that in the chat box. Uh, these are some of the states that we've reached. Um, we can definitely include, oh, Maryland's included. I saw we have someone from there. These are all of the counties within the state of Florida <coughs> that we have reached so far. So if you see um, that your county is not circled, please make sure that you put that in the chat box and we will include you um, on our map. This is the link to, this is a link to the program evaluation. Um, this evaluation asks you um, information about your production practices before attending the conference and what production practices that you will adapt after attaining attending the small ruminant conference, um, investments that you plan on making before and after. It also asks for future topics that you would like for us to discuss at this conference. And that's really important because we wanna make sure that the information that we're providing you is relevant. Um, so therefore you keep attending the conference. And then any um, of the information, such as the pasture management, breeding management, the business plans, marketing, record keeping, um, anything that you plan on implementing um, on, your, on your farm is greatly appreciated um, and, and is asked in that survey. So I will put the link 
in the chat box. So then you can just click on it. You can also use your smartphone and take a picture of that um, QR code and it will take you to the link as well. And, and we, uh, we're capturing, not from the chat, but from the evaluation where you're from more. So there's a lot of people that over the, the week haven't filled the evaluation, but we want to hear from, from you so we can have, uh, can capture your specific situation and then build the conference that way. So mm -hmm. the same thing that we're doing, investing time in you, we want some of that time back, okay? We're trying to bribe you so we can have a better conference next year. And certainly uh, this has been a program that we've been doing for uh, many years, but now with the situation that we're in, now we're going to provide it online as well every year, hopefully in the future. So thank you for that ahead of time. All right, so I don't see any questions, comments, or concerns um, in the chat box. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce our presenter today. His name is Mark Steven. He is the owner and operator of the Capra Cheese Company and Capra Genetics. Um, he's heavily involved in the dairy goat industry for the past 40 years, um, operating a commercial grade A dairy. Uh, they currently milk approximately 200 does and cheese um, was produced award winning as well as the Capragia Genetics, which is a mobile lab that travels coast to coast um, and provides artificial insemination and in semen from their stock. So welcome, Mr. Mark, um, and we look forward to your presentation today. Oh, we have, we, we need to unmute Mark. Yes. He's unmuted. Okay. Oh, I, I muted him. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hold on. There you go. You Is go. it muted? No, you are good. Good to go. I can hear you. You have green light. Okay. Now. All right. Um, we're going to do an introduction to artificial insemination. Artificial insemination is a very valuable tool to any breeding program. Um, no matter how small or large your program is, it gives, gives you the ability to access um, genetics that you would otherwise not have access to. So instead of having to import or um, purchase and transport animals across the US, you can simply purchase you know, a straw and um, it's good for eternity as long as it's submerged in the liquid nitrogen in the nitrogen tanks. So it can be, you know, you could buy five straws and use on your herd and not have the investment of the actual sire. And you can be more diverse and um, be more selective in your, your breeding program. So when I first came to Georgia from Ohio, I had to totally revamp my um, structure of my herd because of these. So I had to source um, animals for breeding that were more parasite resistant to build a more parasite resistant herd. So that's um, one of the great things about artificial insemination. You only need a little bit of um, equipment the basic cost of your um, AI kit normally is around $150. So you have a gun with a plunger. This is actually what you use to insert the semen. And I'll show you how they all go together. You have a speculum, which is glass, which is inserted um, in the dough. And you always use glass because it's a non-porous surface that it can be easily cleaned and sanitized. Sires and how they all go together. Yeah. The straws are all half inch, or I'm sorry, half cc 
straws. So this holds half cc and um, most processors process 120 million cells per half cc. So you've got you know quite a bit in there to get your dose um, impregnated. You can either AI on a uh, natural heat or you can do a chemical protocol with using cedars and uh, hormones. If it's an out of season breeding um, versus a in season breeding on a natural heat. Heat, but for times like dairy situations like ours, we use a protocol for off season breedings. Um, and there are several different protocols out there that you just have to find the one that that you feel the most comfortable with um, and go with with that one. So if I'm doing a natural heat, it's normally about 12 hours after standing heat. So if I go out that morning and they're not on the fence with the uh, with the bucks, if I go out that evening and they are on the fence, which is considered a, then I would AI 12 hours after that standing heat. So when you're loading your gun, you insert your straw into the gun and you have a sheath that goes over the gun because this is not disposable, this is reusable. The sheath is reusable. You slide it on and then you've got your speculum. The speculum is in your dough. You're looking at the cervix. The cervix is open. The gun goes into the speculum into the cervix goes through the rings and then you simply deposit the semen into the cervix and then everything is washed and sanitized when you're thawing your straws for use semen doesn't really care what temperature it is it doesn't like a temperature fluctuate so it does better and you lose less mobility if you're thawing it in ice water because ice water is a constant 32 degrees and it is a slow warm. So you're going from 360 degrees below zero, 320 degrees below zero to 32 to room temperature to live motility. So if you heat it up in a warm thaw jar and if it's, if you're in a warm environment, that's fine, but if it's colder, environment and you take that uh, semen out and wipe it off, that thin shell is going to cool down. About every degrees that it cools down, you're losing about a percentage of motility. So if you've got a constant rise in temperature, you're not losing any motility um, that you started with. So that's basic, um, that's your basic of artificial insemination. Um, do we have any questions? There is a question about cost. The cost, the total cost of equipment is about $150. As far as speculum, um, gun, sheaths, um, light, lube, and a straw cutter. Actually, we missed that step. So when the straw is sealed on both ends, one is a cotton plug and the other is like an acrylic and the straws are filled and then the acrylic plug is put in and then they're frozen. So once it's thawed, you actually have a cutter that you insert and it cuts the tip and then you insert it into your, your gun that way. So your gun, cutter, uh, sheaths, speculum, and light is about $150. Now, you will have to either use borrow or own a semen tank to store your semen which is a, a liquid nitrogen tank but there are several different facilities that will store semen for you vets offices um we do store and see, we do semen storage as well but then you have to ship it to you our semen storage is in florida so <coughs> excuse me if you're not in florida then we would have to ship it to you in a dry shipper which is another additional cost and the costs for 
synchronization. Wasn't sure if you were going to go over synchronization. Synchronization. There's several different protocols. They all require a seeder, and I thought I had one here with me, but I don't. And my lab is actually in Florida right now. Um, I'm leaving in a couple of days to go down and, and do something there, and I thought I had a seeder here. The seeders are approximately um, $20 a piece, and then the depending on what hormones you use, different different protocols call for different hormones. They're not too expensive, but hormones, once you open them, you have to use them. It's not something um, you would want to synchronize six to 10 to utilize the entire vial. You wouldn't want to store any hormones because they don't have preservatives in them and they will not last outside once they're opened. So, um, Normally, it's PG-600 and um, Lutalase is used, and they're not real expensive drugs. I, I couldn't give you a cost right now because I'm, I just don't have that, but it's not too expensive. The cedars are a one-time use cedar. So most of the cedar protocols, you, put the, you insert the cedar, and then you pull the cedar after 14 days. It is a cedar implant. It's a vaginal um, implant. And it stay, actually stays in for 14 days. And it makes the animal think that they're pregnant. When you pull it out, then that actually makes them um, go into estrus. And then starts the cycles. Um, someone put, oh, I'm not gonna, um, is I, the I, process I, the same for sheep? It is similar for sheep. Sheep have a different cervix than a goat. Um, it's more of a, a, a goat, um, cervix is, it's straight ahead. Their, their canal is straight ahead. So you can look straight in with, with this and actually see the cervix. Um, a sheep is more, it goes up and down like a wave. So there's more manipulation. There's, there's folds that overlap. So it's not a straight, a straight shot like the goats. So you have to uh, do it more manipulation with the, with the gun and the sheath. Most sheep are done by splashing. And they don't actually get into the cervix. With the goats, you actually go through the cervix, into the cervix. So that lessens the um, conception rate in sheep by splashing. Which and means that you're inserting the semen um, at the opening, not actually through the cervix. Um, Steven, you are saying that, you were saying that it's not expensive, the materials for cows the estrus in the goat and sheep and when you say when you said it's not expensive what do you mean it's less than 40 dollars less than 20 dollars just for half a an idea well it's that. it's something you're going to have to get from your vet so the reason i say it's hard for me to give a pricing because it is a prescription and it's going to be, you can't buy it direct. So you're going to have to get it from your vet, depending on how they mark it up. Okay. So it could be anywhere from $40 to $100 based on that particular practice and what they're charging for it and how they, what their percentage is and where they're getting it. So it, it's not like it's something on a shelf that everyone has access to. Um, most vets are more than happy to work with you on a reproductive program, but their price is going to change based on their their needs as well. Someone is asking, is 12 hours for all breeds or just dairy breeds? For all breeds of goats. Now, um, what I suggest to people is um, not to breed on the first heat, to wait till the second and see how they... Um, how consistent they are. If I have, you know, sometimes we do 50 does here or, or 60 does. I keep an index card on everyone that I'm AIing 
So that way I have her records as far as whether it was a successful AI, whether her cervix was to the left, to the right, tilted, um, whether there was any problems, and whether she was a short cycling doe or she had an incredibly long um, cycle. Each one is different. We're just talking um, on average here. Mm -hmm. So you, you really need to know your animals and um, treat them as, as individuals. You, those are guidelines to go by. So that 12 hour mark is, is really a good guideline. And just because they're showing, still showing signs of heat doesn't mean that egg has not dropped. So the semen can live inside the dough for 18 to 24 hours. So you want them kind of coming together at the, at the same time. So if you get the semen there too early, it's going to die off before the egg drops. So my 12 hour suggestion is kind of that middle range um, to give the semen time to get there and for them to have time to release the egg as well. You want them kind of coming together at, at the same time. There, there's no way to time it exactly. And just like uh, any, just like humans, even with the drugs, they're going to react differently with them. It's, it's not a set, um, even though you have it down to like, the protocol will call for like to AI them on 50 hours from the pool. That doesn't necessarily mean that's correct for your animals. Um, for example, if they're eating white clover hay, they can have more estrogen. So which means they're going to cycle maybe a little bit sooner. So if you're really wanting to, the, the best course of action would be to synchronize them. Once you've synchronized them, they're in sync. They're going to keep cycling on that synchronization until they're bred. So all that's doing is starting their estrus cycle, which the cycle, their normal estrus cycle would not start typically until early fall. If you're wanting to breed them in the summer, that's when you would use a, a cedar protocol because they're not in estrus at that point. You're trying to bring them into estrus on an off season breeding. So I would do it early like a month before, let's say you wanted to breed them in July for winter milkers. I would synchronize them a month or so to, to then regulate and see how, how it's affecting them and how their, their synchronization is, how their bodies are doing with the synchronization. Um, so a lot of people make the mistake of synchronizing them and expecting them to 100% come into eat on that 54 hours, well, in theory, yes, but their bodies are going to absorb and react to the, the hormones differently eat and as individuals, not like a machine. Someone had asked, where is the light in this system? The light is the best thing to use is a pin light. Oops, let me get the right here. There we go. That it actually clips. It clips on. Let me get right there. So you can see in, it clips to the top, it clips to the top, and then you can see straight down it. Anything else is more clumbersome. I tried using the fiber optic, um, like you would hook up to your computer screen, and I can't do that. I've got to physically, uh, physically see it right there. I can't here and, and working over here. So just a simple light. And I use one that's a stainless steel rechargeable. It's a little more expensive, um, but it's super bright and it's I can uh, sanitize it and keep it charged. It's rechargeable. Someone oh. else is asking, it's a two-part question. Um, please tell us which protocol you use for estrus synchronization and which protocol has the highest consumption rates? Um, I'll be more than happy to provide a couple choices to you guys. Um, I don't like giving one out. Um, I will direct you on where to find them, but I don't like actually giving one out because then if it, there is some variances there and um, I would rather direct you on where to get them than 
um, giving you one. Um, and I can't think of the website. Can I get back to you on that information and get get that sent or push it out? Yeah, we can um, just okay. email it to Francisco and then we can email it out to the masses. Yeah, that have registered. yeah I can do that. Um, yeah, I can do that. Tell us your experience with frozen versus live semen and the effect on consumption rates. Well, obviously, if, if you consider that, um, first of all, the, the conception rate, rate with frozen is about 75%. Because if you consider when we're processing the semen for um, artificial insemination, we're taking that same ejaculate and possibly break, depending on the concentrate and the uh, motility, breaking that same, that one ejaculate down to a hundred straws. We're, we're breaking them down to a hundred of these, that same one ejaculate that's um, impregnating the, the dough. So your conception rate is much higher with a live breeding, but you're just so limited with your genetics with live versus frozen. For example, um, this year I used semen that was probably 30 years old um, because I wanted to bring in some traits, some characteristics that the animals had back then that we've kind of lost um, through the years with our current breeding programs. So, <clears throat> you know, without that, there's no way I could have used that buck that was 40 years old. So your conception rate is much, much higher with live, live breeding, live cover, of course. Because you're you're lessening the amount of semen that you're putting in there. And another question within the AI protocols in goats, do you do any management during daylight hours when the season does not favor the pres presentation of heat? Um we actually here at the dairy, um, our does pretty much cycle year round because they're under light 24 hours a day because we, and that's kind of a, an after effect. We want them eating and drinking as much as possible. So our, our facility is a large, um, approximately a hundred by a hundred barn for the, for the big does, the adults. And they're under lights 24 seven, we want them eating and drinking. So I have seen that when we started that 10 years ago, that they do cycle um, pretty much year round with that, but that wasn't the reason and we don't control it. It's 24 hours a day. So no, we don't, we don't intentionally do any light uh, therapy for reproduction, but I, I can say that the lights that we have do affect, that does affect it. How much does a semen sample cost and where do you get it? Um, the semen is going to vary in cost from 20 to $40 per straw. And you can buy it from individuals or um, like Capergia Genetics. They have an online listing of um, the hundreds of bucks that we market and sell for our clients that we collect for. Um, there's there's a couple other companies that do that, but a lot of people buy from individuals. There there are several different avenues for that. So, Stephen, my question is, what they should look in order for find the best breed to it depends the quality in their product. Right. Um, if, you, if you're working with an ADDA, American Dairy Goat Association, um, their website actually has the production records of individual animals and their offspring. It also has physical traits from their linear appraisals um, to something with better teeth placement. You can go on the ADGA website and look at the, um, the linear appraisal scores and traits and see if that buck improved these traits or hurt the traits. Did that answer your question, Francisco? No, you make a question right now that Did I- Did that answer your question?
I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. That's what happened, that I didn't hear you because you have features with you. Can you repeat what you said? I'm sorry. Yes. Can you hear me now? Because I'm having trouble hearing you as well. Yes, it's like you start talking and then you, I, I hear like an, a space between what you are saying. The um, American Dairy Goat Association, you can go on there and type in a, if you have, if that goat is registered with them and it has daughters that are on test, official test, and linear appraise and it participated in the linear appraisal program you can view that information as far as milk production and specific traits so if you wanted a buck to improve your teat placement for milking mm -hmm. you could look at his daughters and see an average of what their teat placement and teat size was or feet and legs or you know whatever whatever category you're looking for you can find that on there Okay, yes, you answered my question. Thank you. Okay. And as far as type of goat, um, you ask about different breeds. They they are different in breed. Um, for example, in the in the south, like where I'm at in like Florida and Georgia, La Manchas do the best, in my opinion, because they withstand the, the, the best, heat. The best for what? For milk and butter fat because wow. they can because they can withstand the heat okay. it doesn't seem like the heat and humidity bothers them like it does the swiss breeds um the swiss breeds they tend to like cooler weather with lower humidity so the la manchas um they they seem to withstand the heat and humidity better than the swiss breeds the tropical Excuse me. <laughs> and they seem to be um, a little more parasite resistant. Okay. Um, but when you say you are you are talking about dairy production, that in, include um, includes like production of cheese and yogurt, yogurt, or you have well, another breed that you think that is better? Yeah. No, the La Manchas are the best because they have a high butter fat. Okay. Uh, they have a butter fat, <clears throat> excuse me, Nubians and La Manchas have the highest butter fat as a, as a general rule, but the La Manchas have a longer, more steady lactation in the South. Okay. Th thank you, Mark. You're welcome. The next question is, do you recommend artificial insemination in goats that would be served for the first time? Um, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. It says, do you recommend AI in goats that would be served for the first time? So I guess oh, for like the first virgin time. does. Mm -hmm. um, yes, actually, a lot of times that is um, much easier because as the does age, they deepen out and they drop down and the cervix sort of tilts downward sometimes as things pull down. So in the virgin does who have not kitted and not carried that excess um, weight and, and stretched things out, the cervix is normally more straight ahead. So that's what I said about on the cards where I write down it's to the left, to the right, down, up. You know, as, as they kid, things just move around a little bit. So, yeah, virgin does are actually the easiest to do. Because things are normally straight ahead, right where they're supposed to be. How often does pseudo-pregnancy occur? No more uh, frequent than um, live cover. Um, what is the best position of a goat to inseminate? Um, standing up in the, we do it on the milk. We actually do it as we're milking. So when they're coming in the milk parlor, on the milk line, um, we'll ha I'll have the guns loaded and, and setting behind them. And whoever's milking will tell me number 33 is in, number 42 is in. I'll come pick up the gun with a piece of tape with their number on it and inseminate them while they're, like, as soon as they're being milked before they go outside. So we just do it right in the milk parlor. 
Is there an average age when bucks stop producing semen? Um, of course, the older they get, the, the lower motility they're going to put out. Um, some bucks go sterile at, I've had them go sterile at two or three years old. It's, it's just like anything else. Um, it's hormonal and, th you know, there could be reproductive problems with a yearling just as well as a 10 year old. So that's kind of, um, age is really not the determining factor as much as, as, um, just overall health. I've collected bucks as old as 10, but you know, you want to, you kind of compare that to humans or any other mammal, obviously the middle, you know, they're, they reached maturity and then it starts to decline as they age. And someone said, what about the Nubian for the central Florida area? Um, I have had not. I've not had good luck with Nubians. Um, not that they're not a great animal for somebody else. I running a commercial dairy, I need more of a longer steady lactation. We had tried several different lines of Nubians throughout the years, and it seemed like they had a, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> they would freshen and they would peak really early and then drop off um, quickly to where the La Manches would would milk a consistent uh, 11, 12 months. Um, I, it, and the Nubian shut Is it interesting that you say that because the Nubian goats, they are double purpose. People use it for meat and for milk at the same time. So. Yeah, it's actually just the most um, recognized, recognizable goat. Um, mm -hmm. La Manches are also a dual purpose. Um, they're actually a little heavier boned than the Nubians, but they're just not as desirable as flop ears, and they're more recognizable. So people, when they're thinking about getting goats, a lot of times they ask for Nubians because that's the most recognizable breed is a Nubian because it has long floppy ears. Next question is the conception rate of virgin does uh, less than the conception rate for older does. It really doesn't matter. There's really not a difference. Um, you're, you're looking at about, you know, on my average is still about 75%. And what characteristics should I consider to include a goat in an AI program. I'm not quite sure. Um, it really depends on the individual program and what you're looking to add. So th there's not a set answer for that. You you have to have some idea of the reason why you're breeding the goat. Are you trying to get more production? Are you trying to get a better, you know, more specifics as far as like a better teeth placement or better set to the rear hind legs. Um, you know, there's lots of characteristics that you could be the reason you choose a specific. Uh, so once you've determined what you need and you can evaluate your animals, um, then you, you pick the, the proper sire. As, as Steven, um, Oh, sorry, Mark. Um, there is a correlation <laughs> between the size of the testicles in the beef cattle with reproduction. Do you know is the same happen with the male goats? Yes, that that is correct. Um, you want them to be full and and firm, but not hard when they. When they start going um, sterile, the testicles will atrophy. They will shrink down and get mushy. When we are processing semen, we do is we evaluate the uh, the testicles on every male, and um, for initial um, possible problems. So yes, there there is a correlation. Okay, Th thank you, Stephen. Mark, sorry. 
Going back to the question in regards to conception rates for virgin does versus uh -huh. older does, they said they also asked, um, how does induced heat affect that? Uh, it's it really doesn't uh, affect it because you're essentially you're just putting in motion what would come in motion naturally later. You're not manipulating anything other than you're you're introducing hormones that are naturally present in the body that are just not active. So doing a protocol is is technically you're just um, you're just making the natural process happen at a specific time and earlier. So it doesn't really affect anything. It's you're not giving them a foreign hormone. You're not introducing something that's not natural to them. They're they're natural hormones that are, exist or will exist in their body anyway. It really doesn't matter. So it doesn't really it doesn't really affect it. Um, and the last question that I see in the chat box is stating. Um, based on the materials and tools that you've shown, is there any problem with inseminating virgin does? Um, the equipment seemed pretty big. There, there is a different size speculum, yes. That is a standard speculum um, that I showed there just because it was larger, and you can see it. Um, I actually have a virgin speculum. Here I can... So... Here's the difference in size. Let me get up here. Whoops. So th exactly there is a difference in to, size and speculum. Uh, Mark, it's really hard to, you know, to, to know the difference in size. Um, so if you are saying about, if you are talking about size, how, how big is the big one and how what is the size of the big and, and the, um, big the, the large? Sure. The large speculum is approximately seven and a half inches um, with a um, approximate inch in diameter. The small are six and a half inches and approximately um, half inch in diameter. Mm-hmm. Um, one other question, what, rec what recommendations can you make from your experience to improve the pregnancy rate in AI using sex semen? Um, sex semen is, and they must be speaking about cows because there's, it's um, sex semen in goats, it's not as... Um, popular because the semen is is a little more frail than cow semen. They do sex cow semen. Um, goat semen doesn't stand, doesn't seem to withstand the uh, the sexting as as well. Um, really just the thawing process of thawing in ice water versus a hot jar so there's not as much shock. That's the, really the only thing I could remotely suggest is the the ice water thaw to prevent um, loss of motility. All right, that, that's the last question in the chat box for right now. Anything else? Does anyone have any other questions? <clears throat> um, I, I have a suggestion, I don't know if this is proper time for this or not, but um, what I would like to do is a um, a type, like a dairy goat type um, evaluation format at some point to explain um, not types as far as breeds, but types as far as um, physical physical types to what makes a better dairy goat the parts um that would a lot of the questions kind of led up to that you know about picking the right sires and things like that so if we did a type evaluation and showed 
what the the moving parts and the intricate parts and what they're supposed to be like and how they work together that would help them to determine and pick sires um and answer a lot of those questions so just thought i'd throw that out there so if our viewers wanted to learn um how to ai how would they go about uh -huh. doing that um you can you can join one of our we do ai clinics all over the united states almost in almost every state so you could um come to one of our clinics um and you can find us on facebook at capra genetics and um find out how close we would be to where you are um And there's there's several other universities I'm sure that give clinics um, as well that I'm just not aware of. But like I said, we we do clinics um, at least two or three a week, starting in the end of August through January, while we're on going coast to coast uh, processing semen, actually collecting and processing for for different individuals and doing AIs. All right, thank you. Um, I put in the chat box uh, the name Crapagia Genetics, um, so everyone has the correct spelling. Um, pregnancy checking methods uh, that you use? Um, we generally use the either the blood test or the ultra an ultra machine. Um, I have. Um, um, Auburn University normally comes a couple times a year with their new rotation of vet students and we go over some some goat stuff and they preg check them um, or we just do a simple blood test and send it to our local lab it's like seven dollars I think for the for the preg check test for the blood test and you can send that in yourself you don't need a vet to do that if you can draw the blood you can mail it into the lab and there's several in Florida Mm -hmm. And just for the people that maybe don't know how that works, that is an antigen and antibody test that just link and show and tell to the, yes. to the people that that animal is pregnant. Correct. It's a molecular test. That's what that is. All right. Does anyone else have any questions that you would like to ask, Mark? I just want to thank everybody for 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 all the work that that you guys, my team, have done throughout the week. It's been challenging, but it's been fun at the same time. We've discovered a lot of uh, hidden talents we had. I didn't know I was so organized until yesterday. Um, and thank Mark uh, for uh, raising up to the challenge of uh, embracing Zoom uh, to share his experience. I know it's, uh, Francisco had told me that that it's been a challenge. So so really, thank you, thank you all for, yes. for everything. This is my first Zoom. And also, I, I just have to recognize the engagement of, of Mark because I told him that yesterday was his part and we was like crazy yesterday trying to figure out the Zoom meeting. And at the end, um, I, I told Mark, you know what, that your, your, your participation is tomorrow. And I feel really bad because I, I just confused in the process. So Mark, thank you. I know that you always have a, a commitment and you support us. So thank you for that. And, you know, I have to recognize that was my part. You're welcome. Well, thank you, guys. Yes, thank you very much for your time. I know you're busy. So we appreciate it. You're getting a lot of thank yous in the chat box. Oh, great. 
All right, so I'm going to remember to uh, take the evaluation. We always want to improve and find ways to um, enhance the programs that we offer to our clients. And the best way to do that is to complete the evaluation. I just put it in the chat box, the link that you can click on and take that. Um, today is the last day for the sessions. Um, so it would be good um, to go ahead and get that evaluation out of the way and we'd greatly appreciate that. It will stay open um, probably for a week or so. Um, so you can, but things get busy and we don't want you to forget to take the evaluation. So if you could just use this time now to take that, that would be greatly appreciated. So if there aren't any questions, uh, we will conclude this session, unless any of our hosts have anything else to add. No. Francisco, do you have anything to add? Um, can you share with everybody the, the place to fill the evaluation, please? Yes, I put it in the chat box. Um, right, I can pull it. Let me pull it back on the screen. So everybody, please um, understand that we need this in order to provide to all of you um, our educational content. Without our evaluations, it's hard to us to understand what are the needs that you have. Um, this program was made for people in Florida, but there is a high probability that the same needs that we have in Florida are in other um, states and maybe in other countries. So we are very happy to have all of you participating on this small ruminant conference. So thank you for your time. Thank you for um, connect with us and we are here, you know, in, in, in our way to help all of you. So we really appreciate all the support that you bring us during all these three days. So thank you all of you. Um, and see you, see you soon in other activities because we are, we do this every year. So thank you for, for being with us. All right. So I, oh. All right, I don't see any other comments. So I think we're good. All right. Thank you guys. Thank have you everyone. A have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. I hope that you all of you um learn something during these four days of the small ruminant conference twenty twenty. Bye bye.